So Matthias here sent me their newest, Programmable Ergo Pro Keyboard. It's a series of keyboards that are meant to be ergonomic, and it's meant to support hand health as well as, you know, just be a good keyboard. Now I'll admit, I've never used one of these before, and personally, I've had a lot of bad experiences with other ergonomic keyboards. A lot of them just hurt my hand because of how unnatural they are, and many of them aren't even mechanical, so they're not really worth it for me. However, I have hopes with this one. This one's mechanical, and Matthias does make their own mechanical switches. More on that later. So on this side here, I've got the left hand side of the keyboard. It's got every button on them that you would normally press on your left side if you're a normal typist. And it's got a few macro keys. Those are the programmable parts, by the way. The first thing that strikes me out is that it's a TKL layout almost. There's no numpad, and I mean, most people are okay with it, but it's a pretty huge beat keyboard. It's a behemoth of a keyboard. So right here we have the micro USB cable and what appears to be an aux cable. I can guarantee you those aren't aux cables. Included are also a different style of cable as well as you know, an extra micro USB cable. So here, these appear to be aux cables for the headphone jacks on these keyboards, except they're not. They're data cables, they're special data cables, and I've tried using an aux cable on these things. It doesn't work. I had argued that the left side of the keyboard is the star of the show. It's the new programmable in the programmable Ergo Pro. It's got all the macro keys that you would need, and they're all programmable too. The right side, however, has a lot more utility. For starters, it has three, three USB ports. That's a lot of USB ports. I think the only thing I would have wished was if these keyboards had USB 3 ports, and you know, maybe a Type-C port. What I'd like to talk about though are the switches. So as I mentioned earlier, Matthias makes their own key switches and they make key switches in here, which are the quiet clicky switches. And I gotta say, these are probably some of my favorite switches I've ever used. Here's a sound test. Learning how to type on this thing isn't so dissimilar to a regular keyboard. It does require me to change a few bad habits of mine, such as striking the B key with my right hand as opposed to my left hand. It's a good typing experience, and the keystrokes do feel quite nice. I'm not certain as to what the material are on these keycaps, but I'm not willing to find out. Nor can you actually take them out officially. So the Matthias Quiet Click switches, they aren't based on cherries like Cross Design, as most other mechanical switches are. These are based on Alps designs, which I can show you right here. Here's a picture of Alps switches. Honestly, the best switches I could probably compare them to are brands, and among brands, these are probably my favorite brands. If I do make a keyboard in the future, I'm gonna I'm gonna try using these switches right here. So another thing that this keyboard is, is programmable. It's all hardware based rather than software based. And I guess that should mean in theory, it works on all operating systems. As it's software agnostic, it's, it's all hardware. So in order to program your macro, you would hold escape and either one of the macro keys or one of F1 through F12. You hold that and then the caps lock light will start blinking. And then you just type in your macro and whatnot and then you press the button that you're trying to define and it ends it. It's quite simple, really. To clear all macros, you hold escape and backspace. And this will clear every macro back to you know, the default settings. If you want to clear one macro, just enter the rebinding mode on one key. Don't record anything and end the recording prematurely. It'll default back to the normal function. I just feel like being limited to 12 plus four extra macros is a little a little disappointing in my end. But I mean, you can still make pretty good use of it. It's not it's nothing crazy. Now, I think I've avoided the elephant in the room, the ergonomics of this keyboard. And I do want to say the ergonomics are pretty nice. The gel pad 
it's amazing. I want to just rip it off this keyboard and use it on every keyboard I use henceforth. But it's it's pretty it's pretty in there tight. So we'll have to figure that out later. Having said that though, I think that's a really neat feature for people to be able to angle their keyboards however they want as well as split the keyboards however you want. It kind of gives me that like hacker fantasy of having a U-shaped desk with one keyboard half on the left desk and one keyboard half on the right desk while there's like three screens in front of them. That's the sort of fantasy I want to see. And it's sort of possible with it, though it's kind of it's kind of weird with the wire in the middle. I think eventually split keyboards with wireless capabilities will overtake keyboards like this. But I don't believe the technology's there yet. In the meantime though, this is a good compromise. It's pretty neat. The idea behind an ergonomic keyboard is noble. People who are suffering from muscle issues or carpal tunnel issues can use one of these keyboards, but there's no real proof that these keyboards work, and there's no real proof that these keyboards don't work, or even worse, harm. There's just no proof of anything, really. Having said that though, if you're worried about this, I think this keyboard will give you a good peace of mind, so long as you're willing to tinker around with settings or to make yourself comfortable. I really enjoyed my time with this keyboard. I liked doing almost everything with it. Everything except for number crunching in Excel because I'm missing a numpad and that's something that you really need. And also gaming, but that's more of a personal preference thing than anything else really. As for me now, I'm not sure I need a keyboard like this. I've got great hand health, but it's hard to deny the quality is just how good this keyboard is. It's a good, it's a good office keyboard. It's got, it's a good mechanical keyboard too. It's got the best switches that I've ever used. And it's got an undeniable sense of customization that you, know, you wouldn't get otherwise. Having said that though, I'm not sure I'd need this keyboard right now. I might just break it out when I'm like older, much older. In the meantime though, thank you for watching this review. Thank you for watching my video. I know this review was a long time coming. And I also know that I've been working on different content to bring up to you guys. And I was thinking about taking suggestions on what I should review. I'm very grateful for the 727 subs as of the recording of this video. I'm thankful that you all stuck around to watch my content, and I'm thankful that I got even more as of recent. Having said that though, I ask that you please support the channel, share with all your family and friends, like and subscribe, and click the bell notification to get notified when I get new content out there. Please, I promise. I promise to get new content out there. I can't say when because, you know, life's kind of finicky on that, on those sort of things, but I will get content out there on my channel.